In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I saw this other video of this scientist who has come up with a way to start reversing the effects of climate change, okay. of like cooling down the earth. It sounds like a kid would come up with this. Yeah. You send this multiple craft into space, right? And you basically make a giant shade sail in between the earth and the sun. And so like it literally is shading the earth to where it will cool down the planet and but this thing it has to be like something 100 million miles wide or something yeah hey maybe we shouldn't do that yeah because it's like i don't know you don't want to shade the entire earth for yeah. like it just seems like it's gonna it's not even the sunlight it's like the uv rays or something it's like the atmosphere like the invisible oh layers gosh. just not there i, gotta, I don't know like, i don't want sunglasses on all, all the time i promise <laughs> imagine yeah. that just like at, in the morning you just see like these shades like slowly turning like somebody's like but just they're in space and just like the lights peeking through like can you turn off the blinds and just like you can crank it down we live in florida it's gonna be negative 37 degrees <laughs> we're gonna all die dude i don't really think that that's the best idea i get what they're aiming towards but could you imagine if you had this giant net just looming over the earth and then one day that net fails and it falls upon earth and it just wraps itself around earth that would be pretty messed up and if they were really going that route there has to be a more simple way of doing it maybe throw a whole bunch of drones out into space so that you can control the drones to form a blanket like pattern what do you think a black hole is it doesn't exist there, there aren't black holes there's no spot where energy goes in and never comes back out there's no place in the universe where the information paradox occurs where there isn't a balance something gets contracted and never comes out that's not how the universe behaves it comes in and it goes out when newton said that gravity pulls down if he had with that apple yes the apple was attracted to like conditions on the earth it was attracted to like conditions if he had spent another a week or two weeks watching that apple he would have watched the gases go right back up to where they were equalized everything if it comes this way it has to go this way you breathe in you breathe out it's filling in or, or pouring out so what do you think they're detecting when they're detecting black holes with that shift that they're talking about mm -hmm. that's that's the tornado remember there's a vortice there's all these huge vortices the same thing that's happening at the center of the galaxy is happening at in the center of a hurricane I'm still catching bits and pieces of this Joe Rogan podcast with Terrence Howard. From what I've seen of it so far, I've not actually seen the whole episode in itself. I only catch clips on TikTok. But listening to Terrence Howard talk about these theories is really crazy sounding. And I like it, but I find a lot of it really hard to believe. Have any of you seen that episode of Joe Rogan's podcast? And what do you guys think of Terrence Howard's theories? Here's why one times one might actually equal two. Now just hear me out, because a lot of people are making fun of Terrence Howard for saying this, except they're not listening to what he's actually saying. The grand irony of all of this is one times one doesn't equal anything. It doesn't actually exist. This is all conceptual mathematics that we created. It's all in our head. But that's part of the point that Terrence is trying to make. He's asking you to open your mind to the possibility that even the fundamentals and foundations of what we understand about the world might be a little off. So here is a chart of basic multiplicity and addition. I've got it numbered 1 to 8 on the y-axis and 1 to 8 on the x-axis. The teal or blue line shows when a number is added to itself how it grows on a chart, and the orange line shows multiplicity. You see that little gap right there? You see where the addition line is actually greater than the multiplicity line? That's the inconsistency that Terence is talking about. It's a strange little discrepancy that addition is actually more powerful than multiplicity at the first number, 1. But at 0, when you add 0 and 0 together, you get 0. When you multiply 0 and 0 together, you get 0. They're both the same. But then addition goes higher, and then multiplicity goes higher after that when you get to 2. And it just gets a little weirder after that. By the way, when you were in school and you were taught mathematics and they said 1 times 1 equals 1, didn't you feel a little confused in that moment? Wasn't that the one that you struggled with? It reminds me when people told me that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Everyone seemed to believe it, but I knew something was off about it. It was the same thing with one times one. And here's why. When you add one to itself, one plus one, the first one is already there. 
correct? So when you plus one, you've added one to a one that already exists, which makes it two. Well, what happens with one times one? Well, you're multiplying that one, one time, but that first one is already there. So if you multiply that one by one, you get one more one, which equals two. I'm not saying I also believe that one times one equals two. I'm just explaining to you that what he's saying actually kind of makes sense. And we should stop picking on him because of this one thing. More importantly than him saying that we should change the mathematics table is he's trying to say, think outside the box. Start looking with a fresh view at everything you've ever been told because a lot of it is a lie. We can all agree we've been lied to a lot by scientists, by politicians, by economics experts. They've been using crazy, stupid, fake math and all this other philosophy nonsense to trick us into believing that they know what they're talking about because they can talk smooth. You know, so all these little gremlins that are like picking and choosing little parts of sentences that he's saying and saying, that's the whole thing he said and he just, he's just an idiot. Or he got mad about, you know, not being an Iron Man 2 and 3 where they don't explain that he was given a deal for Iron Man 2 and 3 and screwed out of a deal. That's not okay, right? It's not that he's being a baby about it. They signed the papers, they said he was going to be in it, and then they screwed him over so they could save money. This has happened a thousand times in Hollywood, and it's always wrong. And it gets to the point where I think that people have to be doing this purposely, or they have such a low comprehension that they shouldn't be talking at all. Now, I'm definitely not picking on Terrence Howard when he says one times one equals two. When I was in school, it was explained to me that times just simply meant how many. You know, so when you say one times one, you're basically saying one, how many times? And it's one time. So we only been scratching the surface this entire time. Archaeologists are constantly finding new chambers in the pyramids that go far deeper than the outer ground level of the base. And they still haven't been able to find the bottom yet. So exactly how deep does it go? Tall obelisks like these have been found all over ancient Egypt, each with a pyramid shaped tip. And the pointy Egyptian pyramids look much different than all the other step shaped pyramids all around the world. So I wonder why. Almost every other ancient structure was initially buried when we first found it. Like the Sphinx, Gobekli Tepe, and Chichen Itza to name a few. Why why did we just assume the pyramids were fully showing at first sight? Just like we discovered with the Easter Island statues, the majority of their height is buried underground, with some important text inscribed on the side. Nowhere is it written how the pyramids were built, so it could very well be written on the buried sides here. Now I know, these buried obelisks would have been e mother crack enormous, far bigger than what any humans would have been able to move. Let's take a second to compare to this national monument in Wyoming called the Devil's Tower. Very old rock and the only one of its size in the area, thought to be a natural formation. On closer look, it looks oddly like a petrified tree stump with many more like it around the world. Which, if that's the case, leads to the question, who cut it down? Maybe the same giants who built these massive obelisks, which possibly got buried after worldwide floods, only for the tips to be rediscovered thousands of years later by the Egyptians. Even historic texts, such as the Bible, refer to a race of giants called the Nephilim. And ancient drawings everywhere all too often show depictions of much larger beings. The evidence of these giants is found all across the world, from the pyramids in Devil's Tower to these giant steps in Peru, the plain of Jars in Laos, Easter Island, Nam Madal in Micronesia, this giant knife found underwater near the coast of Madagascar. All ancient discoveries which were either far too big to be practical or even physically moved by ancient humans. Once is an anomaly, twice is suspicious, but this many times all over the world, I think there's something we don't know here. I like the idea that the world was kind of built by giants, and I have ran across a couple of comments in my past videos that made me really theorize about what could possibly have been in the past with giants, and why we cannot find them now. One, if giants really did exist and there was a limited number of giants, maybe there was only a thousand giants or maybe 10,000 giants, it would be more difficult to find the remains if they died on earth. Two, if there were giants that we looked upon as gods or holy figures, who's to say maybe when the giants passed away that they didn't grant permission to consume their flesh 
so that they could gain their powers or let their giant bodies provide food for their families for years, you know? And what remains of their bodies are like what we see as mountains and different odd terrains. Let me know in the comments your theories about giants, where they could have gone if you even believe that they existed in the first place. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everybody that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. Look at this y'all. If you needed any more proofs of giants living, look at this. The ring fits his whole fist y'all. He can fit that whole ring on his fist. Do you guys see that? Are you kidding me? 13,000 years ago? Wow. Yes, so the videos of giants that we have been seeing all over TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all that, these are real beings or real or were real beings at one point in time. And I'm sure they will be coming back because if they were here before, they, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, right? There is nothing new under the sun. So I'm sure they're going to be coming back. And that's the other thing. How do you know it's 13,000 years old? I thought they couldn't carbon date metal. Like how do you, or whatever material this is composed out of, I'm sure it's some metal, some type of metal. Like, you know what I'm saying? But look at that. Look at the definition on that. Like you literally have to be some type of, wow, some Smith. I meant to say metal Smith, y'all. Um, but yeah, all this stuff, like, the type of jewelry that we have is nothing compared to this. You know, if this was real gold, this would be worth a lot of money. And think about that. If giants used to roam the earth, what kind of jewelry is probably hiding in the Vatican, under the Vatican? Because you know they are hiding this, this stuff in there, right? Because I don't believe these are just coming out of nowhere. I, f I believe these are artifacts that they're being, that they're coming out. Age of Aquarius. All right. So yeah, y'all look at that. That's amazing. Giants are real. Let's get it. So yeah, very interesting times we live in, y'all. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. I'm not sure if that's actually 13,000 years old. It looks extremely new. And honestly, this looks like it's off of something from Antique Roadshow. <laughs> I don't know where the original video that he's reacting to is coming from, so I can't validate this being very accurate. So if any of you guys have any information on this, let me know in the comments. At best, maybe it's like some kind of metal wristband. If you know what it is, also leave a comment down below. Before seeing this video, I was a lot more skeptical as to whether or not there was a sun simulator in the sky, but now I saw multiple of these sunflower videos in my For You page where apparently the sunflowers are no longer doing heliotropism, which is when they follow the sun throughout the day and face the sun and move, but they're not doing that anymore. They're just looking the other way. And if you think I'm making this up, I'm not. This is actually something that they do. They move, the plant actually moves to go face the sun, but they don't want to do that anymore. Their heads turn back and forth to track the sun during the day. Ever since April 8th, I've been looking at the sky more often, and I seriously think something looks off. The sun, it just doesn't seem right to me. The lighting, it seems more whitish. When I go outside, I feel like I'm not even outside anymore that I'm just in a different room which has an LED light over us because it's more of a white light and I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping out, but something seems different. Have you guys seen the crazy statue at the Denver airport called Lucifer? I mean, Blucifer? What about the crazy murals painted on the wall like this one and this one? Well, I am just being blasted with downloads lately and I found a connection between those paintings and the Denver airport and this demon face post I made and if you don't know what this is, well, I made a post the other day talking about this condition that they were talking about on the news. A Victor Shera? Well, when he sees people, their faces look like demons. And in my opinion, they're just doing that. So when we can see through the veil, we go, oh my gosh, I have that condition. You don't have that condition. You can just see what's actually happening. But back to the point. His name matched up to something, something big. That's right. That guy's name literally matched up to this in the Gematria code. Now look at what I found in these murals. 
Now, at first glance, you might look at this and just think it's a creepy looking thing with these kids around a fire. But I have a keen eye and I noticed that. Can you see what it is yet? How about now? That's a floating city. The floating city that just happens to be talked about in Revelation of the Bible in the coming back of Jesus Christ. And this Lucifer statue too, if you're not familiar with the Bible, it's also talked about in Revelation. Because the four horsemen of the apocalypse are again talked about with the coming back of Jesus Christ. And not only do they have all of that, but they also have a mural where the sun and the moon are in alignment, meaning a solar eclipse. Now here's what I want to say about this, the most important part. As I truly believe we are living in a time past tribulation of the Bible, past the part of Revelation that they're going to try to make us believe is happening. They have capabilities of technology like you would never imagine. The Little Albert experiment, and it consisted of a nine-month-old baby. And in 1920, John B. Watson's study started. He studied behaviorism, but he was specifically drawn to the reason why certain kids, or just humans in general, have fear to specific things. And he was basically trying to see if he could make somebody have a phobia on purpose, on things that they would intuitionally wouldn't be afraid of. This is where we come to Little Albert. So first, he showed a puppy to the baby. And he doesn't really care too much of it. He shows him a rabbit, shows him a monkey, also a mouse. And he has no reactions. But then whenever he introduced these animals again, whenever the baby would touch it, well, he would make like a scary noise or something or... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there would be like a big ass metal pole. And with a hammer, he would just... Every time the baby would touch it, slowly but surely, like, the baby would have a reaction. He was like traumatizing the kid. The whole time, like, the baby would start crying. He was trying to see exactly how much time it took for him to fully become scared of whatever he was trying to make him what scared of. What the f He was purposely trying to train the baby's mind to be scared of whatever he wanted him to be scared of. What the fuck? That's fucked. Also, uh, they never found out how little Albert was put into this experiment. Dang, that's crazy and sad. And in a way, I still think things like this happen. TV shows and movies, they all have a way to help manipulate one's mind. And it would not surprise me at all if there were secretly government-owned movie companies like big names that we know that are making movies that have, that have subliminal messages in them that we do not quite pay attention to, but it registers in our mind and we are indoctrinated to think a certain type of way because of it. Just a little crazy theory that I have. Every time you've heard this in a song, they're making mention of this false god called Nana, which is really just a fallen angel slash demon that they worship. There's a bunch of them. I'm sure you've heard enough. But I know for a fact a lot of us have gotten those songs stuck in our head. The reason they do it is the way they program the frequency of the music is to make it repeat in your subconscious mind. So you're really just going to keep on saying Nana, Nana, Nana. You're saying that false God's name. This is why you need to stay away from worldly secular music. It's all programming. They know the power of your subconscious mind. They know. You see, the real reason they do this is because of Exodus 23.13. Pay close attention to everything I have said to you. You must not invoke the names of other gods. They must not be heard on your lips. We're not even supposed to make mention of other mighty ones. You gotta stay vigilant out here, family. Don't forget to like and follow. Stay tapped in with the truth. I'll see you guys in the next one. Difference between mental illness and demonic possession. First of all, they're not mutually exclusive. Some of the creepiest places I've ever been are psych wards and hospitals. They're crawling with demons because they hide under the disease. But we have three methods that we, we look to. One is superhuman strength. So if a 120-pound woman uh, picks up a 300-pound man and throws him across the room 10 feet, that's certainly not her power. Second is um, a supernatural awareness of uh, events or information they would not have access to normally. So I had a guy who was possessed and he didn't, uh, he didn't have a cell phone. He was just kind of, he lost his job. He lost his house. He lost his girlfriend. He lost everything. And I would just tell him, you know, I'll be by 
you know, sometime in the middle of the week because he didn't go anywhere. He was always home. And when I would show up, he would be waiting outside by the curb. And I would say, how did you know I was coming? And he would say, oh, they get so agitated when you're about two blocks away and I know that you're close and I just come out to, to greet you. Stuff like that, you know, is it's the person can't, a mental illness can't do that. And the third is um, knowledge of uh, ancient or foreign languages. I would have never have thought about someone with a mental illness being possibly possessed by a demon. It was not until I had one job where I was talking to this lady and she was telling me about that, where she's like, well, you know, some mentally handicapped people, they could be possessed by demons and that's what's making them that way. Kind of blew my mind. It's a really interesting concept. This has got to be one of the creepiest things I've ever seen caught on live television, and it happened in the small town of Chozica in Peru in 2023. A news reporter was at this neighborhood of Santo Domingo's doing a story on how everything was flooded. They were at a school, and all of a sudden, they captured something chilly on Saldaña continúan realizando la limpieza con ayuda de palas. Otra de las preocupaciones de los moradores es la falta de muros de contención. They were showing several different parts of the flooded school when all of a sudden they decided to go in. This is what they call Desde el asentamiento humano Santo Domingo Comité 6. Mira la escalera, ¿cómo podría bajar aquí una persona, un anciano? Los niños, ¿cómo podrían bajar, mira? What looks like a translucent humanoid figure can be seen crouching at the base of the stairs. The news reporter did not see this thing at the time, which suggests that this is not a normal person or anything like that. Maybe a skinwalker? I've seen this video once before in the past, and it seems to be resurfacing on TikTok for some reason. And re-watching it now, it kind of makes me wonder if that was just someone really needing help on the staircase. He said that they were kind of translucent, but they were definitely not translucent whatsoever. It, it looked like someone that needed help. I do see one person in the comments saying it's from a movie called Stairs, so maybe it's not even real. If you have any idea where this is actually from, let me know in the comments. The following video is pretty exciting. This comes from archaeologists in an undisclosed location. They claim to have found and excavated a tiny village. It's like something out of folklore, out of the old stores, old teachings. Could this possibly be evidence or proof that maybe fairies or other tiny little people existed that we only read about in stories? Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Oh, yes. Espectacular. Wow. Hermoso lugar. Esta arquitectura no se ve en ninguna parte de Perú, según científicos del mundo. Y las rocas son perfectas, son hermosas, ¿no? Mire, son, miren, si tú mides, lajas, mejor es, que lajas. Con esto, ya. tal cual. Todo es exacto. Todo es preciso, claro. Pero el nivel de detalle y de minuciosidad a este nivel es espectacular. Wow. Miren el tamaño de mi mano. Estos acá son ductos, ¿no? Este va bien. Ductos que conectan, mira. De aquí, aquí y atraviesa todo. Así. Probablemente también para poder darle de alguna manera una oxigenación, oxigenación probablemente. ¿no? Todo se conecta. Y pueden ver, es un sinfín. Va bien. Podría meter tu mano, profe, en el último. Miren, ahí está. Okay. That's actually really cool looking. It makes me kind of wonder, you know, maybe hundreds of years ago, thousands maybe even, that could have just been some kid's dollhouse. It could be something for fairies, but being that there's no furniture in there or anything, it's just plain house, no leftover furniture, no clothes or anything. If there was leftover clothes, I would definitely believe that it was tiny people. If there was like leftover clothes, old furniture, things like that, that would be mind blowing. And just like that, everything changes. Have you seen the podcast with Terrence Howard? The man just dropped a whole new periodic table that changes everything. Life is frequency, energy, and the man just dropped a periodic table that connects everything through tones and octaves and energy. Could you imagine learning this periodic table in school compared to the one that we learned? Everything would be completely different. 
soon will be defying gravity because we will be able to reverse the vibrational frequency of Earth levitation. Okay, everything from science fiction is now become science fact. And this is just the beginning. The seed, the seed got planted. And this seed is going to be watered by everybody who gives a shit about life. When I say gives a shit means whoever's been planted in soil and who's ready for something good has now just been given a key to a reality that is, it is heaven on earth, literally. And it just got dropped and it was put out there. And I'm so excited because the whole periodic table, I'm like, I I loved science, but I always felt something was missing. There was a disconnect within science. This connects everything. This brings it all out for, for you to see. And this man puts it in such a way that everybody can understand. There will not be one person that will not understand the nature of this reality soon. And people just opened up a whole new door to a whole level of living that we've only talked about. And it was just dropped. It was just put out there. Like over the last couple of days. People are now starting to get it. Do you know what inventions are going to come from this? Do you know what discoveries are going to come from this? And I don't want to hear that they're going to stop you because they can't stop you. They don't have that power anymore. Okay. We done risen up and took that power back. We, the people now have a voice. So now going forward, everything that you have seen from science fiction movies that are cool as can be, we, we are now going to be able to bring that into our reality. How freaking cool. <sighs> We just got to keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Because, <laughs> like, this just changed everything. Oh, it's like so exciting. And I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear one aisle from anything, from anybody. Do you know what this man did? This guy's lying. This guy is not lying. This guy's blatantly putting out the entire truth of this reality. If you want to deny that because of something he may have done before, that's all your choice. But the man just dropped the bomb of knowledge beyond the bomb of knowledge. And if you want to deny that knowledge, baby, that's on you. I'm going to live up to that because, like, bro, science just changed like that. Off to the next episode. Excited. Excited. One thing I will say after this Joe Rogan and Terrence Howard podcast, there is so many people talking about it on how they're believers of what Terrence Howard is talking about and how it's going to change reality. Now, Terrence Howard's been talking about this stuff for a while, for, for as far as I know, for the past decade. Nothing really has changed from it. Maybe because he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, there might be some people out there that are going to put his theories to the test. We'll see in the future if anything really changes, if people are going to be doing some super science fiction stuff with his ideas. Are you guys on board with Terrence Howard, or do you think people might be going a little too wonky about it? I'm for it. I just need to see more proof of this world-changing science.
Is it weird when I hear about certain creatures that I wonder if they're edible or not? Like if we have this overabundant amount of sea creatures, can we eat them? I mean, the fish are eating them. I can't be the only one that thinks these types of questions. But nonetheless, it is really odd that these creatures are just coming out of nowhere. So where do you think consciousness is coming from? Everything is alive. Everything is conscious. Everything is, like if you take it from the biblical thing, what part of the universe was it made from the, the creator? Did he pick up some other, if, if the creator is eternal? So we just don't think of them as being alive because they don't move and they don't talk to us. They don't, we don't speak their language. We don't have the sensory ability to perceive their consciousness. But we know, we've learned, like if you look at the secret life of plants, they show that they'll take plants of the same mother and father and they'll seedlings and they'll watch the root growth and the because they are siblings they are moderate in their root growth but then they'll take the same species of plant but use a different seed from another parent and they're more aggressive in their root growth wow they're cooperative they're of cooperative yes they when they're in the family right. the tree they'll take <clears throat> they'll take um, radioactive carbon or nitrogen and put it on the leaf of a a mother tree of a fern or of of, of some kind of or fir tree, and they will put um, uh, isotope or radioactive um, identifier at the at its offspring, and you'll see that that mother tree is through the mycelia is taking that nitrogen and giving it to its to its youngsters. Yes, yeah. they call out and they speak and they're interactive and they're they share resources. No, but you don't understand. See. The Tesla Optimus robot has hands. I'm going to drop the voice. The Tesla Optimus robot has hands. Um, look at Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at it. How much do you think that costs? Just take a guess. How much do you think that costs? 100,000? Million? Nope. And when do you think that's going to come out? When do you think consumers like you and me are going to be able to buy one of those things? Commercially available by the end of 2025. This is the last non-robotic summer of our lives. Every year after this, you're gonna have to choose between putting a down payment on a house or buying one of those things. I'm not making this stuff up. This is really happening. I mean, I wouldn't say that you would have to choose to do those two things. You can either put a down payment on a house or get a robot if you feel like you need one but it is a crazy thought that by the end of next year possibly in 2026 2027 we might not see a world anymore where there is not robots walking alongside people and it's only going to get more advanced as time progresses it's a pretty crazy thought to think about i didn't know if you've happened to had a chat with uh what i call dave by any chance lately define dave uh at least the Consciousness, I seem to be a guide. Uh, I don't know. He just described himself as a consciousness that I've been verbally channeling, just mostly for myself. And I don't know if you've had any chats with him lately. I'm having one right now, You're aren't I? Right now. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. Because Dave is an aspect of your own consciousness. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So, is there something Dave wants to tell you? Yeah. I'm not. I don't what know. does Dave want to tell you? Go follow since my you story. Brought up, <laughs> since you brought up Dave, what does Dave want to tell you? What's the story Dave is telling you? Um, the one he's been telling me. Which is? Uh, all the stuff he's been telling me to actually act on it. So, why aren't you listening to Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> And the answer is, why haven't you been listening to Dave? And the answer is? Oh, mainly because I've... You don't trust Dave, do you? Not totally, no. Why not? <laughs> you think Dave is out to deceive you? No, he's been very, <laughs> he's been very loving, very helpful, uh, bringing me amazing information. And Then why don't you trust what Dave is saying? I think because of what like what I'd said earlier, it might be it's too good to be true, or that I'd be be wasting my time if I actually followed it. So, if things were too good to be true, why would you even consider the idea or construct the idea of talking to someone named Dave? 
I, I didn't even try to do it. It just. <laughs> <laughs> but you accepted it. Yeah. Why? Wasn't that too good to be true? It's been fun. Oh, fun. It has been fun. <laughs> so you'll allow it to be true if it's fun. Yes? No? What? Will you allow things to be true if they're fun? Yes or no? Yes. Well, then, Make have fun. fun. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate Bye, it. Dave. If you still think we're the first advanced civilization to exist on Earth, then this will change your mind and blow it at the same time. Okay, so this is a map of pyramids all around the world, all allegedly built independently of each other and all having identical structures that follow this similar step pattern. Now I know, most historians will tell you, oh, it's just the easiest tall structure to build. It's human nature. If it's so easy, why are our 21st century brains not capable of doing what dozens of ancient civilizations have repeatedly been able to do? We got the famous pyramids of Djoser in Egypt, but everyone knows about those. Across the world, there's Chichen Itza, Pyramid de los Nichas, Tikal Temple, the Great Pyramid of Cholula, among others in Mexico. And then on the other side of the planet, we got Koh Kher and Prasat Bakse Chem Krong in Cambodia. Off the coast of a tiny Japanese island deep within the ocean is the sunken Yonaguni Monument, a supposed 10,000 years old, older than even the Egyptian pyramids. All with a nearly identical look, yet built by completely different cultures with zero contact among each other and thousands of kilometers apart. But this is just the tip. We got way more lesser known pyramids, even older than the Egyptian ones that ain't even standing anymore. Like the Gunung Padang Temple in Indonesia. Doesn't look so hot now, but used to be a step pyramid a whole 9,000 years ago. At least that's what they thought, until a more recent radiocarbon analysis shows that the lower parts of this temple go as far back as 28,000 years. Then this enormous hill in Bosnia was studied, and almost every archaeologist that visited it confirmed that it could not have been naturally formed, perfectly aligning to true north among many other characteristics of pyramids. These studies found out this hidden monument is over 35,000 years old and would be the oldest and largest pyramid in the world hidden under years of vegetation. But the Bosnian government strangely halted further study on this thing for some reason. There's a crazy story behind what they found there, which honestly deserves its own video, so I'll probably be dropping that sometime. The fallen pyramid of Helenikon in Greece has boulders that are joined so tightly that even a human hair can't fit through the joints without any sort of ancient cement used. Built around 3000 BC, meanwhile, an almost identical masonry techniques was found in these walls in the city of Cusco in Peru, called Saskehuaman, over 11,000 thousand kilometers away. And how old are these walls? Mainstream history will tell you they were built around the 15th century, but researchers recently uncovered a writing system built directly within the blocks of these walls that's well over 30,000 years old. Again, a topic that deserves its own video coming soon. This exact method is also found on a site called Ahuvinapu on the remote Easter Island, older than even their legendary Moai heads, as well as Khafre's Valley Temple in Egypt. How did our ancient ancestors figure out these identical building techniques completely independent of each other when we still have no idea how they did it to this day. Now we get to the Ellsworth Mountains in Antarctica. Okay, get your tinfoil hats ready for this one because this satellite footage from 2016 shows what could be a pyramid buried in the South Pole. This map from 1513 by Sailor Piri Rays shows a perfectly accurate coastline of Antarctica even though it wasn't officially discovered 300 years later in 1820. What's weird is this map connects South America to Antarctica which it could very well be that over 10,000 years ago these two continents were connected by a sheet of ice. Researchers claim this map was sourced from an even more ancient document that survived from the Library of Alexandria in Egypt, which was destroyed by the Romans. What if the builders of Giza left this map as directions as to where else they put pyramids around the world? And the pyramids are just the start. Take a look at these ancient artifacts from Bolivia, Turkey, Indonesia, and Easter Island. Four completely separate corners of the world, all with identical carvings and artistic styles used, and again, thousands of kilometers apart and absolutely no contact among each other. Just another coincidence, right? Now get a load of this one here. I know it sounds crazy, but you'd be surprised ancient lasers, or at least some form of precision cutting technology that is on par with our modern drilling methods. From these perfectly cut stone patterns in Pumpampunku, Bolivia, to the unfinished obelisk at Oswan and the boxes at the Serapim of Saqqara in Egypt, made of granite, one of the hardest materials ever, with insane accuracy only achievable with today's technology. The Al Nasla rock in Saudi Arabia literally looks like a giant laser beam just cut right through it. Meanwhile, the Kailash Temple in India, which was somehow cut into a cliffside with perfectly symmetrical hallways carved with copy-paste level precision. Not 
to mention the perfect doorways carved into Barabar caves thousands of years earlier. And these star holes found in Flint Quarry, Massachusetts, and even all the way in Norway, all indicating some sort of highly advanced drilling or precision laser technology used. The incredible list of similarities among these ancient cultures tells us that they all clearly had some sort of external influence that guided them, which they actually recorded proof of directly into their stone tablets, wall carvings, and hieroglyphics. Alright, that might be enough for now. I think I'll save that for another video, so keep an eye out for that one if I don't disappear before then. Another good reason why giants might have existed. Maybe that's how giants communicated with each other. They communicated through that shape. Or maybe that was just a design that they preferred and amongst all the giants, they just spread that information. There's a lot of possibilities out there that could be. Leave a comment down below on what you think it is, if you have a theory as to why the pyramids are the way they are, or if you even think that giants existed in the first place because there's some people out there that believe in giants and there's some people out there that do not. A device that opens portals to be able to interact with extraterrestrial entities? The Kozirev mirrors, named after Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kozirev, are devices that are said to affect the laws of physics and of space and time. Kozirev theorized about a time flow impacting matter and energy in the universe. The construction of the Kozirev mirrors involves two metal cylinders, one placed inside the other, both lined with aluminum foil. The inner cylinder has open ends, while the outer cylinder is closed. The gap between them is filled with fiberglass or another insulating material. Subjects or other people or objects are placed inside the cylinder and exposed to stimuli such as sound, light, heat, or electromagnetic fields. Reported effects from these experiments include altered perceptions of time and space, enhanced psychic abilities including telepathy, clairvoyance and precognition, healing of ailments and injuries, and even encounters with extraterrestrial or spiritual entities. In 1980, scientists from Siberia of the USSR conducted experiments based off Kozirev's research. They produced a special mirror design and started experimenting with mental image transfer over large distances. In the experiments, 12 countries and almost 5,000 participants were involved. In most cases, up to 95% of the telepathic information was received correctly. You want to hear something terrifying? There was this guy, he was talking about how he had this experience with an interdimensional being through either DMT or meditation, one of those two. He said that this being was speaking to him and he zoomed out on the planet and he saw these rings around the planet. And he asked, what are those rings? And the being explained to him that each one of these rings is a thought prison. He was like thought prison what does that mean he was like no matter what you believe in if you're if you believe in christianity hinduism atheism science it is all a thought prison because those ideologies cause you to distort your reality because you base your entire existence off of what you think is to be true and apparently there is an entities that feed off of you being in these thought prisons that's their source of life some people call them archon no matter what you believe in unless for some reason you're able to completely remove your bias from observing reality without imposing your ideals onto them i find this extremely interesting and extremely believable now i've never tried dmt or anything like that but it would not surprise me if there is a collective space somewhere whether it's in this dimension or another there's probably some collective space of heavily thought of thoughts. For example, there's probably a space of thoughts of people that believe in Santa Claus. There's probably a whole space of that thought because people think about it hard enough that all of that energy is going somewhere. That's a really cool theory. I like this theory a lot. It makes sense. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. And they keep wondering, why do they keep blowing over? Why don't you make the, the homes look like a, a, a mushroom? Follow the curvature of nature and you won't have to worry about rebuilding them in hurricane zones or in, in, in tornado zones. It'll go right over it. They, they don't make airplanes that's just a straight box. They've allowed it to be aerodynamic and curved. They moved away from the straight lines in that, that aspect. In boats, they don't have a you know, the Noah's Ark moving across like this. <laughs> they don't do that. Now, one thing I have to agree on with Terrence Howard is this. If anything, I think our houses need to be more structurally built and not in the forms of our typical houses. 
There's so many angles to a house that can catch wind that it's almost, it almost seems like it's done intentionally. But if you had a house that was basically a pyramid, it would definitely probably be way more durable than a standard house. If I ever somehow make enough money, there is one thing that I want. I want my own underground home that is very well built underground. That's something that I really want. Do not want no flooding and I need multiple exits just in case I can't get out of my main exit. I'm so happy that people are finally realizing that babies are like conscious bees. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited people are talking about this. I had a weird experience with my niece and I've never told anybody about it. So I, her parents were away on a date and I had her for the evening and she was just starting to walk. So she was maybe a little over when she was saying a few words, but definitely not saying sentences. Where heading back to the car and then i'm making like a cute little video i'll try to post it if this lets me um or if you'll want it but i ask her i'm like hey millie did you have a good night did we have a good night and she looks at the camera she goes yeah we had a good night and i'm like did that baby just string together a full sentence and then like immediately after she just like went right back to being a baby and i was like what? What is your thoughts about conscious babies? Like, as far as being extremely aware, being able to have full conversations at like a year old. All right, here we go. We have got close. It reminds us of Planet of the Apes, if you've seen the new one. We have no clue what this is. Um... We are here to check this out. See a hatch over there. Oh, that just goes right back into the mountain. Huh. So the only way we're seeing in is through this hatch right here. Because out this way is just the edge of that cliff. True fairies okay, are Okay, so real. my niece gave me a fairy house for my birthday last year. And, or maybe it was for Christmas. Anyway, so this is it. This is where it's been. Now, unfortunately, instead of a fairy, the other day when I inspected it, the only thing in there was bugs, ants and earwigs to be specific. It was gross. And there's some damage from some thunderstorms. Anyways, I'm pretty sure there was an actual fairy in this house at one point. Because there's wings on the ground. <laughs> fairy wings. Man, that sucks. I was really actually kind of wondering if she was going to show us the inside of that. Again, I do not watch these videos to the fullest. I watch the first second to two seconds to see if this is like a, a, a video that's appropriate for this channel. And then I watch it for a reaction. You would be surprised on how many videos like this I have to filter through. Like, I'm already an hour and a half in, and I've already had to get rid of like five videos because they're kind of like this. So this is just a little context of what it's like being on this side of the camera. But I did not expect that at all. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. It's the kind of heart-stopping wildlife encounter sailors dread. Killer whales ramming boats, at times breaking the rudders, leaving the boats unsteerable, or worse, sinking them. And now it's happened again. The crew of the 50-foot Alboran cognac sailboat calling for help early Sunday, a few miles from the Strait of Gibraltar in Moroccan waters, saying orcas damaged the rudder and the yacht was taking on water. The crew rescued. The boat sank. The same pod of orcas have been toying with boats off the Atlantic coast of Spain, Portugal, and France since 2020. More than 400 encounters, sinking at least five boats. Group Ocean Care stressing we do not believe that the orca's behavior is any form of revenge or a deliberate attack on people. 
Experts think the orcas may actually be teaching each other how to break boat rudders. When this started, it was only three of the orcas in this small population that had this peculiar behavior. Now more than half the individuals in the population is doing it. Listen, here's my hypothesis. I don't know for sure, but this is just my thoughts. I think all they're trying to do is tell y'all to get the fuck out the water. As nicely as they know how. <laughs> because I feel like they could really just... They could just sink all the boats. Every single one of them if they really wanted to. Now, when the octopus and squid start getting involved, count me completely out of the water because that's just going to be terrifying. Man claims he has more proof he went back in time by going to Radio Shack. This is definitely Guys, a very Guys, I'm in 1998. As you can tell behind me, I'm at Radio Shack. Okay, Let me show you it. something. Okay, that does look like a radio shack here. Radio Shack, you see that? Right. Radio Shack. I'm not lying. All the letters are here. I came all the way to 1998 just so I could respond to that comment. I'm here to end of the video. I'm going to show you something else that's going to absolutely blow your mind. 1998, check this out. Check it out. This is right across the street from the Radio Shack. A payphone. A freaking payphone, guys, just like you okay, That part's see. a little crazy because I thought they did away one. with all the payphones. You put your quarters in that slot and those numbers down there are there for you to dial your phone number that you're going to call. I mean, how do you deny this, guys? The holy grail, Got pretty much. I'm literally here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Guys, and check it out. Stay weird. I don't believe it. I've seen this guy's videos floating around on TikTok for a little while now. I would need to see a little bit more proof. First of all, where are you at exactly showing that you're in the past? Show gas prices, show vehicles, and if you're in New York, show the Twin Towers if you're in within that time frame. That would be the biggest truth revealer right there. Louisiana, mysterious object spotted in the clouds. You guys will not believe what was just exposed by this mushroom guru. Please listen carefully. Hi there, this may be the first smart mushroom. This mushroom contains a unique group of compounds. Recent research shows that this mushroom helps people fight cognitive dysfunction related to dementia. I think we all need to maintain our wits, especially as we get older. And I think we can all benefit from being a little bit more intelligent than we are. This mushroom will make me and my friends Smarter. So this crazy looking mushroom that looks like a brain can grow brain cells and new neural pathways to unlock memories and enhance cognitive ability. If you have brain fog or if you have trouble remembering things, this can be life changing. It's been proven in hundreds of lab studies to enhance focus and attention. It also helps with depression, anxiety, inflammation, and it helps you sleep better too. Did I mention that it literally grows brain cells? But the craziest benefit is that when you start taking this consistently, you can start unlocking repressed memories that you forgot that you even had. So if lying Mean has all these benefits, why haven't you heard about it from doctors? Well, if big pharmacies can't patent something and turn it into medication and overcharge it by 4,000%, they don't want you to know about it. I'm just starting to get into Lion's Mane. I'm really curious to see the effects of it, to see if it works, to see if my memory becomes clear or if I get a little bit more clear headed. I would really like to know if these effects work. So in the future, I'll let you know if this is an actual good product or not. Have any of you tried Lion's Mane? Do you know if it works or not? Let me know in the comments if you're familiar with this. Three animals, you are glad are extinct, and the last one is absolutely terrifying. First up, the Dinosuchus. This essentially mega crocodile can weigh up to 10,000 pounds and could get up to 39 feet long. Are you joking? This thing was so big and so powerful that T-Rex bones were found with literal bite marks from this creature in it. I mean, a crocodile is scary at the best of times. You don't want to see him. This thing would live in the water and on land and I mean, imagine seeing this running towards you. No thanks. No. And yes, this thing did genuinely exist. There is actual bone structures in museums you can go and see of it, but I will give that a miss. Next Next up, the Titanoboa. And as the name suggests, yeah, it's basically the Kodiak snake. This giant snake can be up to 50 feet long and weigh up to 2,500 pounds. 
back in the day. This guy was the absolute goat. Like, he was just creaming people left, right, and center. But yeah, it could literally strangle any animal it wanted to to death. And finally is the Ratzilla. Now this literally sounds fake, something like it's from a movie, but it's actually real. There is bone structure of this thing. First it looks like a giant capybara, but it's definitely not as nice as that. Now based on fossils which have been found, these guys could get up to 10 foot long, some of them being the size if not bigger than a bull. And this is literally just a rat. So imagine like a rat you'd get in New York, but that big. No. Nah. Their teeth as well would be up to one foot long. <laughs> like genuinely imagine that coming towards you and biting you. Each of these animals, no thanks. I think going to Australia is bad because there's a few spiders there. Well, imagine seeing these giant things. God knows what spiders were like back then, oh my god. But yeah, thank god all of these animals have been extinct for a while, which yeah, I'm actually quite glad about. And let's hope that scientists don't try and bring them back to life like they're trying to do with the Tasmanian tiger and the woolly mammoth, yeah. Cool. The Terrence Howard linchpin. Do you know, did he just tell us how they made the pyramids? Hear me out. Hear me out for a second. Hear me the fuck out. I was re-watching the podcast, and he talks about when he's introducing the linchpin, tangential flight, right? He says, this is the end of cranes. And then you see it picking up weights. We wondered, we've marveled at how the hell did the Great Pyramids of Giza get those stones that were cut out of quarry hundreds of miles away and then brought to Giza. Did he just show us that they had this technology? If you follow the Anunnaki story, Inky and Il, they how they had made these 90 degree cuts in granite, which our technology today cannot duplicate. And these tombs that these pyramids were aquifers, they were not tombs, you know what I mean? Where they buried Egyptian kings. No, 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 no. They were electrical Wi-Fi transmitting devices. And if they had this hydrogen duplicate atom tangential flight technology, imagine what they could fly across these huge stones. Yo, you guys can say whatever you want about Terrence Howard, but watch later on. Later on, if, 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 if he's still alive. Oh my God. I think he just showed us how they built the pyramids. And the closest type of technology we've ever had in today. I am scared for this man's life. I'm telling you, rewatch the video. Watch it. The more they connect, the heavier the things they can grab. And they just connect and connect and connect. Yo, did Terrence Howard just basically prove how they built the pyramids? Tell me on bug. Watch it. Go, go back and watch it. I can't play the video because of... Go watch it. People are freaking out after nine pillars of light were seen in the sky above a coastal town in Japan recently. And it wasn't just one picture. These nine lights were seen from multiple different angles. So... What the hell is that? Well, the man who originally posted the photo said that it's actually a rare natural phenomenon called fishing firelight pillars. And he said that it's caused by powerful lights placed on fishing boats to attract larger catches. As temperatures cool overnight, crystals sometimes form in the air. And then the boat's lights reflect off of the crystals, creating this. Is that just as simple as aliens, is it? Taylor Swift? Yeah, we all know she's demonic, man. No, no. She's, quote-unquote, a clone of the high priestess of the Church of Satan. Huh? What the fuck? Where did Yo, you learn this from? What? Look at this pic, fam. This is like a famous mm. high priestess yeah. of the demonic church. Mm. Looks exactly like Taylor Swift. Now, what's crazy, they share a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. They're both singer-songwriters, fam. They both have the same blonde hair, the same facial structure. Look, they even wear the same, like, lipstick. Look at their eyes. The eyes, fam. Yeah. That's Taylor, and the fam. the eyebrows. Yo, that's exactly Taylor Swift. That's Taylor. So, the theory is that she's actually either a clone of her or her just in disguise. Or they've, like, replaced her with her.
And she's using the music in the same way to take people's souls and like make them attach to her and literally become infatuated that it's it becomes like a yeah. following. The following footage is from a woman who was just trying to do a cute Snapchat with her son when something grabs his attention and what he reveals spooks her. Take a look at this. Cheese. Cheese. What you doing? What you see? What? What are you saying? Hi. Uh uh, who are you saying hi to? Who are you saying hi to? Dude, you need to stop that. You're freaking me out. What are you doing? What did you see? What? Lucy? The real question is, is Papa still with us? If Papa's no longer with us, then yeah, that's pretty crazy. It really does make me wonder what goes through the eyes of children because they can probably see things that are beyond our visual comprehension. Because there would be no reason for a child like that to just lie about something and act strange because they might have seen it on TV or something. That child's way too young. You could definitely tell that they were innocently and honestly waving at someone calling them Papa. I wonder why we lose the ability to see the things that kids can see. Let me know in the comments if you have any theories on that because that's a good question. Is it because our pineal gland gets calcified and we just need to decalcify it for us to be able to do those things again? I am curious. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was much longer today. And also, I have an idea on how I want to start uploading videos in the future where I'm probably going to do a side-by-side -side where I'm on one side of the screen again and I'll have the video clips on the other side of the screen. Let me know if you've made it this far into the video what you think about that because I am thinking about doing that because I'm going to run my reactions a little differently. I would like to maybe play some of these videos out and I do not necessarily give my opinion on every one of them, but I'm just watching them until I want to state my opinion, you know? Like this video was a long video and to me it's just fun sitting here watching all these videos, but not every video needs my opinion, you know? So it would be nice to just have me sitting on one side of the screen so you can at least still get my reaction and then once a topic comes up that really piques my interest and, and then chime in and give my opinion. It's just an idea that I'm thinking about doing. Let me know in the comments if you think that it's a good idea or not. But as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.